let's talk about the hamstrings. The hamstrings are a group of muscles in the posterior aspect of the thigh. These muscles act to flex the knee and to extend the hip. Right. And we've got Mickey helping here. Now, all of the hamstring muscles originate off of the ischial tuberosity, coming down, crossing the knee joint, and inserting onto the tibia. Now, we'll start out with the semimembranosus muscle. The semimembranosus originates off the ischial tuberosity, coming down and inserting on the posterior medial aspect of the tibial condyle. So on the skeleton model, you can see it originates here, coming down all the way across the joint into the posterior medial aspect of the tibial condyles. Now the second hamstring muscle we'll discuss is the semitendinosus. The semitendinosus is posterior to the semimembranosus. And so it in, originates off of the ischial tuberosity, as we can see here, like all the hamstrings, coming down, slightly more medial, and it actually inserts via a very thin, long tendon along the superior medial uh, aspect of the tibia. So coming off the ischial tuberosity, coming down, actually inserting more to the medial side of the superior tibia. Now the third hamstring muscle is the biceps femoris. Now this muscle has two heads, a long and a short. The long head originates off the ischial tuberosity, which you can see here, and it comes down and inserts onto the fibular head, laterally. The short head originates about halfway down the shaft of the femur off of the linea aspera, and both, muscle, or both heads of the biceps femoris muscle insert via a common tendon onto the fibular head. An interesting point is that where these muscles insert, they're actually bifurcated by the lateral collateral or fibular collateral ligament of the knee. So you can see how this attaches to the fibular head and the tendon of the biceps femoris would be bifurcated by this ligament. Now let's discuss the primary actions performed by the hamstring muscles. Now the hamstrings cross more than one joint, so crossing the hip and the knee and as such they can affect movement in a number of different planes. They're primarily involved in knee flexion and hip extension. Great, and bring the leg back. Now an interesting point here to make is that your gluteal muscles are your primary hip extensors. If they're inhibited or weakened, your hamstring muscles will actually try to take over that role. The hamstrings are your secondary hip extensors. However, with weak gluteal muscles, you'll overuse the hamstrings which can lead to adhesions or restrictions that form in the muscles. Now, an interesting point also is that if we look at the hamstring muscles, the lateral hamstrings, the biceps femoris, because they attach laterally, are involved in more of an external rotation of the leg. So as you can see Mickey performing that. Great. And the medial hamstrings, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus, would create more of an internal rotation. Now let's talk about hamstring muscle palpation. The only way we can accurately identify where those muscles are is to incorporate some muscle testing. So your patient's prone, knee slightly bent, and I'm going to ask Mickey here to basically resist my force as I push down. Perfect. Good. And now relax the leg. We're going to start off by finding the ischial tuberosity. So we're getting in right there. And we're going to try to identify the biceps femoris, the lateral hamstrings. So resist, uh, there you go. And you can really feel that tendon pop out right underneath your fingertips. And relax. We're going to follow this down laterally. Once again, resist. Yeah, you can feel that muscle belly just pop right out. Following it further down. And relax a bit. And once again, resist. Now here, you're starting to get more into the tendinous area. And you can follow this all the way down, feeling where it inserts right into that fibular head. Good. And relax. Good. Now let's palpate the medial hamstrings, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus. Normally we have the patient in a prone position with their legs side by side, but we've modified this so that you can better observe what we're doing. So once again, we're going to bend the knee slightly. We're going to have Mickey resist. We're starting off at the ischial tuberosity. Okay, and now resist. 
perfect. And you can really feel the tendon pop out right here, the common insertion, and relax. Now we're going to follow this muscle down, so we're on semimembranosis. Good, and relax a bit, and resist. And we're strumming perpendicular to the muscle belly to help identify it. Okay, and resist again. There you go, good. Now we're going to follow that semimembranosis all the way down to the medial posterior tibia, crossing the knee joint. Now the semitendinosis is actually lying on top of the semimembranosis, and we're going to follow that tendon down where it goes into the pes serene region. So once again, starting at the ischial tube, and resist, good, and relax a bit. Now resist again, making sure to strum those fibers back and forth, good, and relax, going slightly more medial, good, and now resist, and right about here you can really feel that tendon, it starts to really stand out underneath your fingertips, and that's the importance of the muscle testing. So resist again, we're going to follow it a little more medial, distal, right into that pes serene area, good, and relax. Now I'd like to mention a clinical note about the semimembranosis. The semimembranosis attaches right into the medial meniscus of the knee, and it helps facilitate movement of that meniscus during knee flexion. It helps to prevent impingement of the medial meniscus between the femur and the tibia.